I have been uh, requested by the organizers this year to talk to you about Lebanon, a country which has uh, generated a lot of uh, confusion and uh, ambiguity over the last uh, several years, a country uh, which, despite its uh, small uh, size, has been at the center of uh, main uh, regional conflicts uh, because of its borders with uh, Syria, Israel, and its uh, uniquely complex sectarian uh, makeup. Uh, analysts uh, always mention uh, persisting political and macro imbalances. Uh, they uh, also have doubts as to uh, the country's future uh, role uh, in the newly arising uh, regional geopolitics. But they all acknowledge and admit its uh, high potential and its uh, very strong uh, resilience. Such a conflicting uh, analysis, which normally leaves uh, third parties with uh, the impression of a country with uh, an investment uh, paradox. Lebanon is a sectarian uh, country which have always been governed by uh, a consensual democracy. Consensual democracies do provide, in uh, difficult times, relative political and uh, security uh, stability, because uh, political divides uh, are confined to political institutions, uh, rarely uh, extending to streets, but uh, they also render uh, policy decision-making uh, lengthy and they uh, create uh, deadlocks. Uh, like the current uh, political uh, vacuum we are witnessing uh, in the country. We haven't had uh, a president elected uh, since last May. The uh, parliament is not uh, functional and it has uh, just extended uh, its own uh, term and the cabinet is uh, powerless. Uh, but despite those uh, shortcomings in uh, uh, the political system, Lebanon, among uh, various countries in the region, uh, still uh, provide uh, the best uh, template for managing uh, pluralism and rejecting uh, radicalism. When uh, ISIS uh, came to its border uh, recently, uh, main uh, political parties, even conflicting parties, rallied together along with the media and the civil society to send a strong signal that the Lebanese population uh, is against uh, violence and, uh, and uh, radicalism. And probably this is linked to the uh, ancient uh, origins and uh, deep roots of a population which have been uh, subject to successive uh, additions uh, yet uh, without altering its initial uh, identity. We find in our Muslim and uh, Christian uh, people in Lebanon exactly the same humanism uh, driving their uh, religious uh, process. Uh, resilience in Lebanon does not uh, require any uh, empirical evidence uh, to prove it. 5,000 years of uh, history are uh, more than enough uh, to support it. The uh, Egyptian pharaohs, the Ashur kings, the Persian uh, kings, the Greek phalangist of uh, Alexander, the Roman uh, legions, uh, the uh, courts of uh, Crusades, Saracens, Byzantines, Turks and Mamluks, uh, Ottomans for 400 years and most recently Syrians for three decades, they all invaded this small piece of land without uh, dampening the capacity of the Lebanese population uh, to uh, always reverse, uh, uh, rebuild and further develop. They, hold, they always had uh, to pull out. And this is something which is quite meaningful about uh, this uh, very strong uh, resilience. Uh, probably uh, what many uh, people among you uh, does not know is that 5,000 years ago in the city of Byblos there was internal lanes organized into concentric uh, circles 
and there was uh, water, uh, wastewater evacuation uh, canals 5,000 years ago. But let's be a little bit more factual. It has become clear that uh, regional instability, uh, mainly with respect to the Syrian conflict, and uh, the long-lasting uh, global uh, macro imbalances affecting uh, commodities prices and the rates markets have significantly increased Lebanon's country risk. The domestic political scene has become uh, more uh, fractured and uh, fragmented, and the security conditions have uh, deteriorated. Uh, in turn, uh, Lebanon's economic conditions have uh, also weakened, but without leading to any kind of uh, recessionary-related uh, vulnerabilities. GDP growth rates shrunk to 1.5% per annum over the 2011-2013 period after having achieved on average 8% over 2008-2010. Uh, that said, uh, the risk of a major systemic crisis in Lebanon remain, in our view, very low, but leading to growing uh, divergence between uh, country risk and uh, sovereign risk. Country risk relates uh, to the overall political and economic governance, to uh, security and uh, regulatory risks, as long uh, as to environmental uh, ones, whereby a sovereign risk uh, is uh, much more concerned about the risk of the government to fall on its dues, uh, leading uh, to a massive uh, outflows of funds and to a possible uh, collapse of the currency. Normally, country risk and uh, sovereign uh, risk uh, are highly correlated, but there is some cases whereby they are not, and uh, this is the situation of Lebanon. While uh, uh, deteriorating uh, uh, political uh, conditions and uh, uh, security conditions uh, in the country are uh, waiting heavily on the real sector, uh, public finances, and more crucially, uh, the banking system supporting them have been quite uh, resilient, with their uh, prospects remaining fairly stable. This is uh, the kind of equilibrium within the disequilibrium which characterizes uh, always uh, uh, Lebanon. Uh, what uh, we need to know is that uh, High volatility has always been the main feature of uh, Lebanon growth uh, history. Uh, downturns uh, primarily caused by uh, uh, regional instability and its related uh, security conflicts, uh, followed up by uh, catch-up uh, uh, expansions. Uh, a recent uh, uh, comparative uh, analysis by the World Bank uh, covering the last 14 years which witnessed uh, a lot of political setbacks in Lebanon, show an average GDP growth rate of 4.2% in Lebanon versus 4.7% for the whole MENA region, despite the important increase in oil prices. Uh, the main issue remains volatility as measured by uh, a standard deviation of 3.5 for Lebanon versus 1.4 only for the, for the region. But uh, the main lesson uh, remains that uh, in the middle run, Lebanon uh, always uh, catches up. Today, the capacity utilization rate in the private sector is at 75%, which means that uh, Lebanon can sustain uh, GDP growth rates in the range of 6 to 8% per annum in the foreseeable future before closing uh, the gap. Domestic uh, deposits as a proxy for the system uh, liquidity uh, are still at three times GDP, three times, fueled mainly by recurrent inflows. Since the outbreak of the Arab Spring in early 2011, they Lebanon have attracted $57 billion of inflows, corresponding to 20% of the total of the MENA region for a mere contribution of 1.4% only in Lebanon the consolidated GDP of the region, 1.4% versus 20%. Uh, foreign assets uh, at the Central Bank uh, 
there we have the historical height of 38 million dollars, which corresponds to 80% of the money supplied in local currencies, or well, almost the currency world situation. And that's represented also by the two masses of import, which just among the highest ratios worldwide. Then the foreign currency reserves of the central bank, in addition to the stock of gold at the market uh, prices, represent an aggregate of $50 billion, which corresponds to almost two times the outstanding debt in foreign currencies at 56% of GDP. Uh, all those uh, financial indicators highlight the sustainability of uh, Lebanon's main economic and financial uh, buffers. Uh, the challenge for Lebanon today is uh, again uh, not to become a proxy for uh, regional and international players that are trying to shape the events uh, in the region. The main political groups uh, are being uh, committed to diffuse uh, tensions and they are resisting uh, being pulled domestic conflicts. Having said that, uh, Lebanon uh, is uh, not uh, capitalizing uh, still uh, enough on its endowment uh, and is not addressing uh, main constraints in its uh, domestic economy and therefore is not taking advantage of the many uh, opportunities lying at its door like it did perfectly well in the 50s and the 60s, paradoxically during the regime uh, changes in Egypt, uh, Iraq, and uh, Syria uh, at the time. But uh, still, uh, the situation uh, expresses much more uh, for Lebanon in terms of delayed upside than in terms of further downside. Looking ahead, uh, the important resilience uh, of uh, Lebanon uh, and the principally its uh, financial industry made it hard uh, to envisage uh, what type of event can uh, undermine the depositors' uh, confidence and uh, jeopardize the sustainability of the sovereign debt. Uh, this is something which is uh, quite, uh, quite uh, sensitive. Uh, we should uh, it would be wise uh, to be complacent uh, with risks and despite this historical uh, resilience. Uh, because uh, conceptually, there is always a tipping uh, point where things will go uh, bad enough politically or economically uh, that the positive start, start to pull out. Uh, now, where this point uh, uh, lies from the government uh, is very difficult uh, to predict. Because uh, historical and uh, statistical uh, experience for the last uh, 20 years uh, shows that uh, Lebanon has still a long way to go uh, before facing a systemic density uh, or a banking uh, system uh, crisis, and this is uh, for the uh, following considerations. First of all, uh, since uh, the country existed. Inflows have represented on average 48% of GDP. 48%. Just to highlight the important uh, difference between disposable income and domestic uh, income. And 150% of the structure trade deficit. Second, uh, inflows are much more correlated to all prices than to domestic political conditions. The World Bank have uh, uh, made a regression uh, estimating the correlation at uh, 0 0.76 with a very high significance. For each 1% increase in oil prices, we observe normally 0.4% of additional growth in the domestic level of the in the one year after the correlation of 0.86. Change in uh, yearly domestic deposits in Lebanon represents 60% of inflows with a correlation of 0.89. Also, some questions have been calculated by the world bank in Lebanon because inflows are 
Employment by ship 6 to 8 percent, really grows in Lebanon. What is needed is $7 billion of state refinancing to the domestic economy. It's both top owners of public and private sectors, which would require slightly higher uh, volume of uh, new flows. In uh, 2014, this year, which is a very difficult year for the region, for the uh, we have been able to attract, in the first nine months, $13 million of inflows, showing an increase by 7% uh, with respect to the corresponding uh, period of, uh, of last year. Uh, and uh, lastly, uh, trade links and the financial links of Lebanon are with the MENA region, more uh, precisely with the GCC, and the uh, workers' remittances at $2,000 per capita to be compared with $3,000 of per capita income for all importing countries in the region. So I'm comparing remittance per capita of Lebanon versus per capita income of all importing countries. So I'm talking about two to three, so two to which is very normal because per capita income for Lebanon is at $11,000 of Turkey and Mexico. The so workers' dependencies originate normally in the GCC, Sahara, Africa, and Australia, three geographies which are, which are witnessing strong economic conditions and uh, their uh, prospects remain uh, very stable and, uh, and positive. Uh, nonetheless, uh, this uh, important uh, resilience, which is uh, due uh, principally to the atypical uh, dimension of Lebanon. 12 million Lebanese around the world, for a year, 4 million living in Lebanon. This is what we call the Lebanese diaspora, which happens to be a healthy diaspora, successful diaspora, creating wealth on a yearly basis and maintaining very solid ties with the Muslim country. So, this important resilience should not push our policy makers towards more laxity. We believe that Lebanon has today a real opportunity to change. Course. It has obviously, as I said, a history of a strong uh, resilience, but uh, uh, unlike uh, uh, the past, uh, pressures uh, today are really facing the problem. The government uh, recently took uh, very drastic measures to adjust uh, security issues with very positive results. We believe that the same resolve is needed uh, today uh, to address persisting uh, economic and uh, fiscal imbalances and uh, to uh, implement reforms, uh, political and economic reforms, which are apt uh, to boost growth uh, towards uh, more uh, robustness, uh, sustainability, and, uh, and uh, fairness. Among uh, the uh, most uh, prior macro-critical structural reforms, uh, I will, uh, I will uh, see it uh, principally improving uh, social services and safety nets by uh, nationalizing health expenditure, uh, extending insurance uh, coverage, reforming the uh, end of uh, service indemnities, and improving the quality of uh, public education and public uh, transportation. We also need uh, to uh, move our fiscal system towards uh, more uh, efficiency and fairness uh, by extending the taxable debates and uh, uh, reforming the tax uh, administration. There is a lot to do also in improving the business uh, environment by lowering the costs of doing business which have been heavily affected by the poor governments, poor regulatory systems, and improper uh, contract uh, enforcement. Uh, we need also to uh, consolidate the electricity sector by lowering the cost of electricity and by reducing uh, the budgetary transfers to the company managing uh, the service uh, electricity minimum which has represented about 10% of GDP for the last uh, few years. 
We need also to put in place very quickly a macro fiscal anchor for the sustainability of the uh, gas uh, resources and gas development institutions uh, in order uh, to manage the gas rights in a more efficient and uh, transparent way. And I think that the focus of the government should be nowadays much more on how to manage uh, the gas resources instead of how to use uh, gas. Uh, and uh, lastly, I believe that uh, there is also another very important issue which uh, is the important influx of uh, senior refugees uh, in the Lebanon, uh, amounting according to different estimations from 25% to 50% of the population from 1 million to 2 million refugees, which are talking about Australia, um, it's the social economic issue of Lebanon and its security conditions. As if of a right to see a hundred and a hundred million Mexicans remain in the US and putting pressure on social economic conditions and security conditions. Uh, a, uh, a, uh, another study, which is quite interesting, uh, by the World Bank shows that uh, reforms, uh, including uh, increasing uh, public investments, nationalizing, uh, uh, cutting the uh, expenditures, uh, improving competition, reducing macro volatility, uh, implementing much more proper uh, contract enforcement environment, uh, and and three years after reforms, three percent additional to growth uh, in Lebanon over the steady pace of four percent. This is huge. Uh, this would translate into fifty percent more uh, of medium term uh, GDP per year. Uh, in order to understand more and to allow for few questions, I will uh, say that uh, the most important challenge for uh, Lebanon today is to cure its uh, Dutch disease, with uh, which it was uh, born and uh, which have been affecting its economic ability and so our citizens. Uh, Dutch disease relates uh, to the abundant uh, and uh, easy recurrent wind flows uh, which uh, stimulate domestic demand much beyond the full uh, supply and potential of the country and therefore generating or exacerbating elemental inflation and generating relationship, administration, uh, loss of competition and the job of destruction. destruction. Uh, mitigating the Dutch uh, disease uh, can only uh, happen uh, throughout uh, achieving a transformation a change in the overall uh, political and economic uh, governance. Politically, uh, we need to shift as soon as possible from the ailing consensual democracy towards a real full-fledged one, aiming at uh, consolidating uh, the uh, pluralism, uh, the uh, uh, openness, uh, the uh, uh, tolerance that have always uh, characterized uh, Lebanon, uh, but uh, uh, which also uh, which is also needed to further strengthen uh, governments, rule of law, and uh, inclusive uh, groups. Uh, economically, we need to change the modus operandi of the economy. It's a very long process because the economists are like tankers and it requires a lot of effort and time to change direction, but still we have to start today by uh, changing this direction, uh, by uh, shifting uh, growth drivers and Lebanon from domestic demand to foreign demand, from domestic consumption uh, covered by imports, fueled by inflows with all the dependencies towards the foreign sector, uh, shifting to the foreign demand, uh, boosting uh, exports fueled by investments and generating real wealth and uh, job uh, creations. This is a very important uh, challenge uh, where the historical responsibility of politicians as well as uh, social partners that is, in my view, uh, heavily, heavily engaged. The success uh, will depend upon the scope and depth of uh, political and economic uh, reforms, which in turn depend uh, upon the 
the political parties and the civil society to take an active part of the expected, uh, in the expected transition and to influence the course uh, of politics uh, towards consolidating Lebanon unique uh, model again of pluralism, tolerance, openness, and uh, inclusion. Uh, there is no shortcuts uh, for uh, uh, democracy and uh, prosperity. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I'm sorry. Thank you so much, Dr. Glass, for this uh, detailed analysis of the situation in uh, Lebanon. Um, so we're going to be using Pigeon Hall. Uh, so if you want to ask a question, please log into pigeonhall.at. The password is how 2014 And you can uh, ask whatever question you want or avoid some questions that have already been asked. So I'm going to start with a question that took the highest votes. Dr. Bass, one of the strongest institutions in uh, the is the financial one. What are they doing, other than business as usual, to push the situation in the NAM to become more positive? The, uh, for those the uh, banks in Lebanon as perceived as being boring ones, I remember the first time I've been told that uh, my bank Boring bank uh, by Moody's. Uh, Twenty years ago, I was really offensed, <laughs> but, but I didn't took it. I, mean, I took it as a criticism. Whereby today uh, we know uh, that boring banks uh, are the banks which have been the most resilient to the uh, uh, global uh, turmoil. It's true that we look as being boring because I mean our business consists by gathering customers' deposits. Which represent 90% of our funding, so we don't have any borrowings. We are not dependent on the market, on the market for that need. On our sales, uh, we only uh, to the uh, uh, retail deposits, which we do use in uh, very simple financings, uh, simple uh, risks, trade uh, uh, financing, working capital financing with some uh, project financing. By all times and by all means, uh, high degree discussions uh, uh, and uh, investing into uh, uh, debt instruments uh, which risk, uh, which risk we are uh, uh, well acquainted. Now, having said that, uh, it's not that uh, the banking uh, industry in Lebanon is not fully assuming its intermediation role in transforming. Uh, savings into investments, especially when uh, when you look at uh, the consolidated uh, lending of the domestic economy, it's today at 110 percent of GDP, which is among the highest exporters uh, worldwide. Maybe what has triggered this question is the very low ratio of loans to assets in the Lebanese banks, which uh, represent uh, 30 to 35 percent. Uh, but this is not due to a lack of uh, financing of the domestic economy as much as to the over funding of Lebanese banks. Because when you look at the liability side, you find out that deposits represent three times GDP, whereby loans on the asset side represent one time GDP, which is a very high exposure, but loan to deposits and loan to assets are very low. But Lebanese banks are investing a lot in technology, developing uh, quite uh, advanced uh, ICT infrastructures. Uh, they have a a lot of competitive tensions represent different fields in the region that are fully assuming their responsibility in financing their domestic economy. Thank you. Uh, so the next question is Do you see that Audi competing with the big banks of the GCC? Uh, we are uh, already in the top 20 banks. Uh, region banks, so we are already in the uh, group of uh, national chains in the region, also we are not competing with them on the domestic markets. We are not present in Saudi Arabia as a commercial bank, we are not present in Kuwait as a commercial bank, we are not present in Qatar, I mean we are in Qatar, but we are regulated by the QFC, not by the Central Bank of Qatar, so uh, we are uh, 
much more than the level of fiscal muchness and, uh, and uh, in terms of uh, shareholders equity. Uh, our aim obviously is uh, to become a regional player and we are currently executing a strategy uh, of uh, uh, expansion in the region which have been uh, a little bit delayed by the uh, outbreak of the Arab Spring and its impact on the overall economic conditions in the region. But we had an opening in Turkey, uh, which uh, so far have been uh, quite uh, successful uh, in terms of uh, building organically over two years of activity, $10 billion in assets, tangible material assets driven by customers' deposits, which do represent 80% of the deposit base of each of ING and HSBC in Turkey, having each one of them 25 years of presence in the market and managing a network of 400 branches each, whereby our subsidiary in Turkey, Odia Bank, have less than two years of history and is managing 40 branches only. Because we're running out of time, uh, there are two questions related to Syrian refugees, so maybe we can try to take them together. Do you think the Syrians did more good or harm to the Lebanese economy? Although most refugees strained the economy, wealthy families moved their money and spent it at Lebanese economy and real estate. And then related to that question, is there opportunity for the financial sector to benefit from the Syrian refugees in Lebanon? <laughs> No, I'm going to start by the end. Uh, we are opportunistic as bankers, obviously, but not to that extent. Uh, <laughs> uh, now, I believe that uh, concerning the impact of the uh, influx of Syrian refugees on the Lebanese economy, there have been, honestly, a very comprehensive uh, study which was undertaken by ESCO, uh, the UN uh, ESCO. Uh, which highlight in details uh, the impact, the impact of uh, the Syrian refugees on the Lebanese uh, economy. The end result, obviously, is negative, uh, because you are right. Uh, uh, the only positive contribution uh, could be the uh, uh, the impact on domestic uh, consumption of such a high number of uh, population, which have boosted domestic consumption, as witnessed by main. Uh, imports uh, and uh, uh, consumption uh, indicators, uh, but this is not uh, enough uh, to account for all the negative contributions uh, as uh, measured by uh, the impact on the uh, basic uh, utilities, uh, the services, and uh, on the infrastructure, uh, which have translated so far into uh, direct uh, fiscal losses of uh, 2.5 billion dollars and a, an accumulated uh, damage for the, uh, for the economy estimated at 2.5% uh, of GDP uh, yearly over the last uh, two, three years. Uh, so uh, it's a burden uh, uh, for such a small country like Lebanon. Uh, obviously, there is a, a humanitarian dimension uh, which uh, uh, oblige uh, uh, Lebanese uh, to be uh, open and uh, supportive. Likewise, Syrian has been with Lebanese themselves during the 2006 uh, summer war with Israel, but uh, proportions are not uh, in line. I mean, the Lebanese refugees at that time in Syria, in terms of total weight, uh, it's nothing uh, to be compared with the uh, Syrian uh, refugees in Lebanon in uh, terms of uh, weight. Uh, now, I believe that. Uh, Opportunism, uh, in the positive sense of the word, is not vis-à-vis uh, -vis Syrian refugees. It's vis-à-vis -vis Syria as a country. Should uh, Syria succeed its own political transition? Because uh, we believe that uh, uh, there will be a, a very uh, a huge reconstruction site in Syria, which will benefit primarily to Lebanese uh, banks and uh, entrepreneurs. I don't know if you are aware about the uh, uh, damage estimations uh, uh, in Syria because of the war. Uh, they have been estimated between 150 to 200 billion dollars, and there is some estimate which goes 
even beyond 200 billion dollars, uh, and the uh, estimations of uh, uh, reconstruction needs in Syria, so the reconstruction start today, uh, are at uh, 430 million cubic meters of cement and 35 million tons of steel, uh, which correspond, uh, uh, I believe that I gave this uh, example in my last year uh, conference here, it does uh, correspond uh, to uh, 4,000 bushel Arab for the cement equivalent and 3,000 Eiffel Tower equivalent for steel. And the needed cement uh, is equivalent to more than one full year of cement production of India, a country like India, uh, whereby uh, uh, the steel is equivalent to more than one full year of the steel production in Ukraine. So this is a major opportunity uh, for Lebanon because we believe that we can develop uh, a lot of uh, competitive uh, advantages because of the proximity, you know, uh, uh, lower transportation cost, uh, and we can uh, be uh, efficient. Uh, but not taking advantage of the city benefits. Uh, so, Dr. Bass has a flight to catch, so I'm going to try to combine two questions, and uh, this would be our last question for the evening. So, uh, the two questions are related. Do you believe the brain drain in the plan can be stopped? And the other question, I'm a graduate of MIT and Harvard. What can I do tomorrow to make uh, Lebanon to instill positive change in Lebanon? Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't look at it as a brain drain. I look at it as uh, a valuable hidden export. <laughs> <laughs> now, obviously, I mean, this is a very precious uh, capital, a very precious input, I mean, to further improve uh, the size of our economy. No, we need you in Lebanon. Uh, we are not encouraging you, you know, to get exported and uh, to build wealth outside of Lebanon and to send, you know, back a part of this wealth to Lebanon. Also, you have been supporting all those recurrent uh, inflows to Lebanon. You know that remittances represent on average 45 percent of inflows. So this is the most important component. But having said that, uh, Lebanon have also been heavily damaged by uh, 15 years of political uh, turbulences. I don't know if you are aware uh, that in uh, 1975, at the eve of the so-called civil war in Lebanon, I don't like to call it civil war because it was much more a kind of war of others on our territory instead of a civil war between Lebanese. But the result is the same. At the eve of the civil war, uh, Lebanon's GDP used to represent 70% of that of Singapore. Singapore GDP today is at $300 billion. 70% is $200 billion. We should have kept you know, the same uh, benchmark. Uh, but the war happened and we cannot redo history and the damages, I mean, are there. Uh, today, GDP is at $47 billion. Uh, as I said, uh, the capacity utilization rate is at 75%. It means that potential output is at $15 billion more. It's estimated at $62, $63 billion. Uh, and uh, we have to close this uh, gap uh, very quickly. But the steady state level of GDP in Lebanon, as per the IMF definition, which is the level of GDP would have attained today, should we have kept growing as the same average of the previous 20 years to the uh, war of the 70s and the 80s, would have been at 120, 130 billion dollars. So however we look at the size of the economy, we are uh, heavily underperforming. And in order to uh, catch up, we need capital, obviously, but not only financial capital, we need the human capital. And this is where the uh, input of uh, the Lebanese brain is important. But for the time being, as long as there is a lot of considerations which are lettering uh, Lebanon uh, to, uh, to catch up, uh, we believe that uh, uh, the exit of uh, brain or the brain drain uh, is what uh, uh, which have uh, allowed uh, Lebanon uh, to uh, sustain and uh, to survive uh, and uh, to uh, uh, maintain its, uh, its standing. Uh, so it's about short term and medium term. But uh, now, should uh, Lebanese families uh, uh, make uh, 
uh, more babies and sends them at school and uh, <laughs> provides them with the education. Even, even, I mean, the shortfall of human capital uh, covered, there will be always an excess which will be uh, exported. And by the way, those 12 million Lebanese around the world, I mean, how it was initiated, same way. And this is the real wealth of Lebanon. Uh, on this note, uh, we'll end our program for today. Did I miss uh, something in your question? Or no, no, I think we're, we're good. On that note, uh, I'd uh, like to ask you all to uh, join uh, join me in thanking uh, Dr. Bassett.